Welcome to our Friday one o'clock online Bible study. We are so delighted that you're joining us today. Um, this is the second of our uh, live Facebook Bible studies. We are studying Jesus experiencing his touch. Um, go and get your copy, get yourself a pencil, but if you haven't got a book, pick up your Bible and come and sit down and join us. We're going to meet together studying God's Word and um, just really engaging in a very practical way. And we'll be doing the study for about uh, 30 minutes and then have 10 minutes for questions. So if you've got questions as we go along, please um, text them in and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them at the end. But before we start, I'm just going to pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to meet and we pray, Lord, that um, you would speak as we read and study your word. Thank you for your word. And I pray that by your spirit, you would do a mighty work in and through this time that we have together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. And just a welcome to those of you that uh, maybe weren't here last time. Uh, those of you that are new to the study, really hope you enjoy it. So all you're going to need, is, as Molly said, is a Bible, a pencil or this particular study. Um, which you can get from our website. So what I want to do is just give a quick recap of mm -hmm. what we did last time and then we'll get straight into the study. So we started in Mark chapter 1 last week uh, and Mark chapter 1 verse 1 starts with the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we saw right away in verse 2 that um, Jesus was prophesied about in the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah lived some 700 years before Jesus mm -hmm. was born. So, so that's amazing in itself. We then went on to see uh, that John the Baptist was baptizing people in the Jordan. People came from Jerusalem, from Judea to be baptized. And uh, that he was pointing to somebody who was going to uh, baptize, uh, not uh, for the forgiveness of sins, but with, um, we not see in verse water. 8, but but with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. That's correct. And then uh, Jesus was baptised by John in the Jordan, and immediately after that, he, um, the Spirit, we read in verse 12, impelled him to go out into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. So that's a very quick summary of what we did last week. And so what we're going to do now, start in Mark chapter 1, and uh, looking at verses 14 to 20, if you've got the book, we're on page 8. So let's just get, get straight on together. So we're asked to read uh, the text, verses 14 to 20, and to draw a, uh, a squiggly line under John. And we're going to mark Jesus uh, with a cross, every reference to Jesus with a cross. Uh, we're going to put a, a check mark or a tick by the word immediately. And we're going to put an arrow facing to the right for the word follow or followed. So I hope you've got that. We'll make it clear as we go along. So, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Verse 14 of Mark chapter 1. Now, after John, John so I'm just putting that squiggly line under John, had been taken into custody, Jesus, Jesus, so we put a cross over Jesus there, came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Top of page nine. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he, he as Jesus, was going along by the Sea of Galilee, he, he, Jesus, so mark that with the cross there, saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus. Jesus said to them, follow, follow, I'll so just put an arrow over the follow there. Yeah, follow me. Me. So you put a cross through Jesus, and I, I, Jesus, that's Jesus, so you put a cross through the eye there. I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately, so I put a tick over that, check mark. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And followed him. So again, you've marked those two words again. Verse 19. Going on a little farther, he saw... He. he there, Jesus, saw James, the son of Jebedee, Zebedee, sorry, and John, his brother, who were also in their boats mending their nets. Immediately... Immediately he... He, Jesus, so he's marked those two words 
called them. Over the page, to page 10. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went away to follow him. Follow and him. So we've marked those two as well. Okay, let's go back and go through some questions related to this text. So it says on page nine, what does Mark tell you about John the Baptist at the beginning of this passage? Well, we mark John in verse 14 and we learn that John had been taken into custody. Okay, he's taken into custody. And the next question, according to verses 14 and 15, where did Jesus go? What did he do? And when did he do it? Okay, so again in verse uh, 14, he came into Galilee and we see that it was after, he came into Galilee after John had been taken into custody. And um, what was he doing? Well, he was um, preaching. He was preaching the gospel of God, wasn't he? And the message, I think we can see that message in verse 15. Do you want to? Yeah, the, uh, um, saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent mm. and believe in the gospel. And actually it's interesting, isn't it, because that ties back to chapter 1, uh, verse 1, when we learn that Jesus is the gospel, he is the good news. And uh, so, uh, and repent, in the insight box in, on page 6, we learn that repentance is to have a change of one's mind about something. And that consequently leads to a change of belief and or a change of behaviour. So Jesus was calling them to repent and to believe in the gospel. Okay. Verse, uh, the next question is, bottom page nine, look at verses 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. Where was Jesus? Uh, who did he come into contact with? And what did he call them to do? Okay, so we've got to look at verses 16 to 20 here. So where was Jesus? Well, he was going along by the Sea of Galilee. And, um, and he met some fishermen, didn't he? They were, they were ordinary men. Yeah. And um, they're given some names here. We see them, Simon and Andrew, and they were they were fishermen. And actually, over the page, it's really helpful. Um, there's a map. I know we're not directed there yet, but over the page, if you're not sure where that is, um, I can show you um, on page page eleven. There you go. And whether you can see that. Um, and so Galilee is uh, towards the top of the map. You can see if Galilee is there. So, okay, so he was so. by the Sea of Galilee, he met the fishermen, and it said, um, what did he call them to do? Well, I think verse 17, isn't it? At the end of verse 17, yeah. we see that he calls them um, and says, I will make you become fishers of men. Yeah, but he says, follow me. Oh, yes, of course. So that's quite yes, a vital thing. Yeah, totally vital. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. just so simple, isn't it? Follow me. That's yeah. what Jesus... Um, Command called, them to do, follow to Jesus. Do. Yeah. yeah, follow Jesus. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, and how how did they respond to to what Jesus told them? Uh, this is the question at the top of page ten. How did they respond? Yeah. They well, yeah. This is quite a challenge, isn't it? It said that immediately they left their nets and they followed him. There didn't seem to be a hesitation or anything. Yeah. He must have said it in such a way, so commanding, that they, um, yeah, they just were really just desperate to follow him. They yeah. immediately left their nets and they followed him. That, that, yeah, I mean, that really is, that really is a challenge, isn't it? Um, and I wonder if there are any of you out there that have heard about Jesus and maybe heard his call, um, and he's just waiting, you're just, you just need to make a decision to, yeah. to, to follow, follow him, him and to do that right away. And if you sense God, God, um, touching your heart in that way, then I would just encourage you to do that. To now, don't sit on the fence. Um, and so um, uh, I would encourage you to do that. And also, it wasn't just his, the nets that they left. They left, it said, they left their fathers, everybody in the boat as well to follow him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they went away to follow him. Mm. Uh, interesting, isn't it? Leaving their leaving their life of fishing to go and follow Jesus. Mm. The, the, the question at the end here is, is, what do you think Jesus meant when he said, I will make you become fishers of men? I think that 
um, it's obviously speaking their language, so they understood, but I think it's, you are going to leave your um, catching of the fish, you're actually going to be bringing men into the net of God's kingdom. Rather than fish into a net, you're going to be bringing men into the, um, the kingdom of God. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, section. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28 is the next um, section we're going to look at. So we're asked to read these verses and uh, mark every reference to Jesus as we have done before. Uh, we're asked to double underline anything that indicates where Jesus was. So, so, yeah, where he was. And to put a tick mark over the word immediately. So uh, there's another instruction which we're asked to do, but I'm going to do that when we read it through the second time. Mm. Yes, so, and that's a good point, actually, isn't it? Because um, sometimes you can become so focused on the marking that actually you're not engaging with the text, so, um, and you're not really understanding what it's saying. So if, if it's too much marking at one time, mark a couple of the words, then go back and read the text again, and then do the next marking. Okay, so here we go. So we're marking Jesus, where he was, uh, with a double underline and immediately with a tick. So here we go. Mark chapter 1, verse 21. They went into Capernaum. Capernaum, so yeah, mark that. And immediately. So we need to tick mark over that. On the Sabbath, he entered. So that's a he, that's Jesus. Entered the synagogue. The synagogue, so that's the place where Jesus was. And began to teach. They were amazed at his teaching. His. his. So mark the his there with the cross. For he, he Jesus, Jesus yeah, was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. That's interesting, isn't it? Just then there was a man in their synagogue. So I'm marking that as well because it says that's where Jesus was. He was in the synagogue. With an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, what business do we have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Now, when there's a phrase, Jesus of Nazareth, um, I only mark one of the words, so I've just marked Jesus there. Cross over Jesus. So what business do we have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? You. I know who you are. You. The Holy One of God. Again, and that phrase is referring to Jesus, Holy One of God. So just decide where you're going to put your cross over which word. Verse 25. And Jesus, Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. Throwing him into convulsions, the unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they debated amongst themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands. He, that's Jesus. Okay. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Him. Immediately. Immediately. The news about him. Him. Jesus spread everywhere into all the surrounding district of Galilee. Okay, going back to page um, 11 and going through the questions. Okay, so the first question is... I think we need to go back and mark unclean spirit. I forgot. You You're did, quite right. that's okay. okay. We're going to read it through again and we're going to mark unclean, unclean spirit. spirit. Right. So, uh, verses 21 to 28. And we're marking uh, unclean spirit with like a pitchfork, if you can get that. Um, so here we go. They went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and began to teach. They were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. Unclean. And he cried he, out. I'm going to mark the he there because that's referring to the unclean spirit. Saying, what business do we have with each other? Now, that's interesting. That we there... Um, I think it's talking about the unclean spirit and also you could put Jesus as well. What, do, what, what business do we have with each other? So you could actually put a double marking on that, we. Okay, so what business do we have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Us, that's the unclean spirit. I know who you are. I. The Holy One of God. 
And Jesus rebuked him, him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. Throwing him into convulsions, the unclean spirit unclean. cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they debated amongst themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits. Unclean. And they obey him. Now that they is also the unclean spirits there. So I've marked that. Immediately the news about him spread everywhere into all the surrounding district of Galilee. Now I just want to say something at this point. Because for those of you that may not have done this before. Um, you will notice that we are obviously going through the text. And we're marking it as we go along. And you may say, well, why, why are you doing that? Well, one of the things that we teach people with inductive Bible study is to carefully observe what the text is actually saying. Mm. And if you are asked to mark a word, then what, do you, what have you got to do if you've got to mark a word? You've automatically got to read the text carefully to understand, is, is that, for instance, is that word Jesus or is that word not Jesus? You've got to think about it, haven't you? You're engaging in the text. You've got to think about it. So, so inductive Bible study, the precept method of study, it's like proactive Bible study. It's not just sitting there on receive. It's actually you and me actively engaging in the Word of God. So marking is a really simple skill, really simple tool that we teach people to slow you down, because we live life at such a pace, to really see what the text is saying. Okay. And the other thing is, it also shows us where we need to go back and find the answers to the text. And so it's, it's really important that you do mark. Um, and so when we answer the questions, we go back to where we've made those markings. Okay. Uh, and if you've got any more questions about marking or this method, then please please ask, ask the questions and we'll, we'll do our best to come back to you uh, with those. Yeah, just type that in the comments bar, I think. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first question is, where was Jesus in verses 21 and 22 and what was he doing? And this is a great example of the value of marking because we've already marked that they, that is Jesus and his new followers, um, went into Capernaum. So the answer in um, verse 21 is they were in Capernaum, but specifically that they went into the synagogue. And we've marked, we've double underlined the synagogue there. So that really helps us to see where Jesus was. Um, and what was he doing there? He was teaching, according to verse 21. He was teaching and he was teaching on the Sabbath. But it's interesting, isn't it? He was teaching um, in a way that was really challenging them. Because they were he was teaching them with authority. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and just interesting, um, it says, the next question is, look at the map below to identify the location of the city and the synagogue mentioned in these verses. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just going to show you on the... Um, on the screen here, I'm going to try and point to it. So we've got Capernaum, which is up in the north of the, can you see my finger there? It's right, right close to the Sea of Galilee, up in the north. So that's where this is, that's where this is taking place. Okay. Um, also, it mentions synagogue in verses uh, 21 there. Yeah. And I just want to read, mm. in fact, can you read? Uh, yes. There's an insight box on page 13 which gives some really helpful information about the synagogue. The synagogues were the official meeting place for the Jewish people in New Testament times. They became centres of learning and worship where the people gathered to read from the law and the prophets, pray and hear messages from those invited to speak. Synagogues came into being after the Jews were sent into exile under the Babylonians. Separated from Jerusalem and their temple, Exiles established synagogues as a mean of preserving their faith. They first sprang up outside the land of Israel and then were established throughout the land after the Jewish people returned from exile. Okay, so, so those of you that have got, have got the book, you will see as we go through it, these little insight boxes, which give some uh, greater explanation and understanding where appropriate as you go through the text. And that's a really good point, isn't it? Because um, in this way of teaching you how to study God's word, we want to observe the text carefully, so that's what we're doing. We're asking questions, we're marking the words. Um, and a lot of it's really um, straightforward to understand, but sometimes 
if there needs to be a bit of help with that understanding, that's when the insight boxes come in, and that's, that's really helpful, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so over the page, on page 12, so the next question is, um, we, we've, we've seen that he was in Capernaum in the synagogue teaching, and the question is, what was the response of those around Jesus? Okay, so again, um, looking at where Jesus was in that synagogue in verse 22, they were amazed. They were absolutely amazed at his teaching. And I well, was beginning well, to say yeah. that, wasn't it, yeah. before, that because Jesus was teaching them as one having authority. And that's in contrast, it tells us at the end of verse 22, and not as the scribes. So he was a good teacher. Yeah, getting and they were amazed by it. Yeah. Okay. What happened next, and how did Jesus handle it according to verses twenty-three to twenty-five? Mm. Okay, this is a, a great um, event that's happening here. So, just then there was a man who came into the synagogue. So, Jesus was teaching. Yeah. And a man in the synagogue. Um, he cried out because he had his unclean spirit in him. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting is that the text in verse 23 says just then, and Jesus was teaching with authority. And it was at that point that he actually cried out. Mm -hmm. So the man, he was in the synagogue and he had an unclean spirit and he cried out. Yeah. What's the next question? How did he handle it? How did he handle it? Mm. Well, Jesus kind of, well, one thing I wanted to say actually that I haven't said, the, um, the man with the unclean spirit, it kind of engaged Jesus in a conversation, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and um, he asked Jesus two questions and then um, proclaimed something which is quite interesting. Um, but Jesus wasn't allowing him to speak. He rebuked him. And actually, in and we see that in verse 25, Jesus rebuked him. And he said, be quiet, and then said, come out of him. Yeah. So that's how Jesus dealt with him. Yeah. Didn't allow him to engage in that conversation, didn't um, discuss things with him and talk with him. It's very clear, wasn't he? Mm, really clear. Te again, with authority. Um, yeah. The next uh, point is that we're asked to look at the, the pitchforks that we've marked for unclean spirit mm -hmm. and move through the text and discuss what we learn about the unclean spirits. And again, this is uh, such a great, the, the marking tool is so helpful here because you can just identify those pitchforks, mm. look at them, and then say, right, what are we learning? Mm. And uh, you want, you can make a list about the things that we're learning. So, And actually, that's a good point. We didn't say that this week. You've got some space underneath the questions where if you want to, you can actually write your own notes. Um, or in your Bibles, you can um, make your list in your Bibles as well. And remember last week, um, I think I mentioned that we've got some really helpful pens, they're micron, they're non-bleed pens that um, we can supply for you. So you can make your lists directly in your Bible. And um, I don't know whether you can see this here, but that's exactly what I've done. I've actually been able to mark my text and I've made some lists um, in the margins as well. So, sorry to interrupt you, back to that that question then. Okay, so basically, what are we what are we learning about the, the unclean spirit as we go through? And I think the first place we see that in verse 23. Mm. Um, you've already started to talk about that, but what are some of the other things that we're learning about this unclean spirit? Well, he was in the man. It's an obvious thing, but the unclean spirit was in the man. And we mm -hmm. see that, don't we, in verse 23, and I think also in 25 and 26. Mm. Um, and I think it is so interesting that he... Um, revealed himself, if you if you like, or he became manifest at the point of Jesus teaching, and that really speaks to me how um, Jesus teaching is with power that um, evil manifests itself, if you like, in the presence of God, and so when God's word is being spoken, the evil spirit had to reveal himself. Yeah. Um, he cried out. It's an obvious one. So verse twenty three, he he cried out. And um, he engaged Jesus, or sought to engage Jesus, in conversation by asking him questions. Yeah. 
what business do we have with each other, Jesus of Nazareth? He knew who Jesus was. Yeah. He knew where Jesus was from. Yeah. Uh, and then he asked that question, have you come to destroy us? Yeah. Um, and then, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. So here we have an unclean spirit mm -hmm. who is conversing with Jesus, yeah. uh, asking questions of Jesus, but also recognising who Jesus is. And actually, that's such an important point, isn't it? Because he said he recognised Jesus' humanity, but he also proclaimed his divinity. Yeah. He knew where he was from in terms of Nazareth, but mm. also he knew where he was from. Eternally. He, e eternally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what else do we learn about this unclean spirit? Okay. So. Um, verse 26. Thank you. Verse 26. Yeah. When Jesus um, commands him to come out of him, he, he cried out with a loud voice, but he had to obey. He came out of the man. Jesus had authority, Jesus had authority over him. Yeah. I think it's interesting, verse 26 there, in Mark chapter 1, throwing him into convulsion. So there was a physical manifestation, uh, manifestation yeah. of what was going on inside this man. And um, as you said then, he cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. So... So Jesus says, come out. The unclean spirit had to come out. Had to come you out. see that very clearly. Yeah. All right. Now, um, question on page 13 towards the bottom says, what was the reaction of those who watched Jesus interact with the unclean spirit? Clearly there were people there watching. So what was their reaction? Yeah, they were part of the synagogue, weren't they? They were the people in the synagogue. Again, they were amazed. <laughs> <laughs> and they debated, didn't they, among themselves. This is verse 27. Mm -hmm. And they were questioning, what is this? This is a new teaching with authority. And they, they were just, I think, amazed at the results of Jesus' teaching. It had obviously impacted their lives initially, but now they had seen that Jesus came teaching with power. It wasn't just with words, it was with power. And that even the unclean spirits, they had to obey him. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you guys out there want to say about that or the interaction between the unclean spirit and with Jesus at all. Uh, I think it's it's fascinating to see to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, you've had a comment from Quintin uh, saying that the unclean spirit saw mm -hmm. the divinity mm -hmm. of Christ, recognised the divinity of Christ. Yeah. So, so thanks so much for that, Quintin. All right. The last question is, uh, just before we come into to land, as it were, it says, if you have time, discuss what impressed you the most as you observed the first 28 verses of the first chapter of Mark. So this is really spanning what we did last week and what we looked at this week. What's impressed you most as we've gone through this first chapter? Mm. I think the first thing is that... Um, both John the Baptist and Jesus were prophesied in the Old Testament. And Isaiah was um, the prophet who spoke about John the Baptist coming before Jesus. Yeah. And that gives me such confidence that 700 years later, I can really trust my Bible. I can trust God's word because it came true. That's the first thing that really impressed mm -hmm. me. Yeah. What about you? I think the fact that it starts right up front in Mark chapter 1. It says this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the beginning of the good news of mm. Jesus Christ. And I think for me it's a simple fact that Jesus is good news. Yeah. Um, you know, good news is not an event. It's not, it's not, uh, it, Jesus, it's good news person. is a person. Yeah. Good, good news, news is a person. person. That person is Jesus. Yeah. Um, I think also the fact that, um, I think that there was a, Right at the start of this ministry, we see that there was a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. We see good coming uh, up against evil. And uh, Jesus being tempted in the wilderness for 40, 40 days and 40 nights. So there was a spiritual battle that Jesus engaged with right at the start of this ministry. And we know, I know, you know, mm -hmm. that we are engaged in a spiritual battle here. And mm -hmm. if we are nailing our colours to the mast and following Jesus then we need to know that we are engaged in spiritual battle. And actually, just as an aside, we have an incredible study uh, on the whole subject of spiritual warfare called Lord, Is It Warfare? Uh, and you can contact us about that later if you're interested We've in that study. We've also got a 40-minute study done. 
virtual warfare. Yeah, and we've got one of these studies on yeah. the same subject. So, so that, that also struck me. Um, what about you? What, what can you see? What's impressing you about what you've learned through chapter one? Have a look and just please just put your comments down underneath um, this video and we would love to get back to you either today or in the future if you're, not, if you're watching this after the live event, please put your comments down because we will respond to you and we just really want to hear what you're seeing and um, we don't have all the answers. I'm sure there are things that we haven't seen and talked about that you're going to find out and um, you know our strap line is discover truth for yourself we're not here to teach you what to believe we're here to empower you so that you can discover the truth for yourself and i think also as, as we're slowing down and really taking it careful verse by verse to see what it's saying we're actually giving god time to mm. speak to us mm. and uh and that is amazing uh, who doesn't want to hear god speaking to them i certainly do yeah. and this is just a great way to do that so there may be some things that you've seen, things that you haven't. You may be familiar with this passage, these passages, but uh, there may be some things that you've seen afresh, seen new, and we'd love to hear from you about those things. And also, particularly, we don't just want to observe the text and understand it. We actually want to live in light of it. Yeah. So there may be some things, uh, some points of application, things that uh, have touched your heart or mind, that maybe you need to think differently about circumstances mm -hmm. or do something uh, differently. I think that for me, the key thing has been the whole business about following Jesus. Mm. We are just asked to follow Jesus. And so I would ask you, are you following Jesus? Are you following him with your whole heart, mind, soul and strength? Or are you living with one foot in the world mm. and one foot um, seeking to follow him? So, yeah. okay. So I think... We've just got the wrap it up to do? The wrap it up, yeah. And then um, we'll Shall pray. Shall I read the wrap it up? Read the wrap it up and pray. Okay. And then um, any questions? Three times in our text this week, we saw the word gospel. Verse 1 speaks of the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 14 and 15 speak of Jesus proclaiming the gospel of God. The gospel is literally the good news. But what good news? Often we think of the gospel as the collected facts about Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. This definition is accurate and spelt out clearly in places like 1 Corinthians 15. But what is the gospel, the good news, in Mark chapter 1? Jesus had not yet died on the cross. In fact, he'd only just begun his ministry. Verse 15 tells us more of the good news that Jesus preached. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Something long awaited for, something amazing and powerful is at hand. And that is the kingdom of God. So what are we to do? How are we to respond? Jesus says in verse 15, repent and believe in the gospel. What does it mean to repent and believe? Without taking away the joy of discovering all that is coming our way in this study, Let's start with what happened next. Jesus said to the fishermen, follow me. As we study the Gospel of Mark together, let's be intentional about following Jesus. Let's focus our minds and hearts on what it means to believe in the Gospel, to repent and to follow Jesus, to draw near and to experience his touch on our lives. Shall I just pray to finish? Yeah. Father, we just thank you for what you've taught us through your word. Thank you that you've just shown me very clearly that Jesus came from Nazareth, but he's also the Holy One of God. I thank you that he is the one with authority. And I thank you that even the unclean spirits have to obey him. Father, would you please just help us to remember these truths now as we live out our lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thanks so much for joining us uh, today on this uh, Precept uh, Facebook uh, as we go through the study on Mark's Gospel. And uh, we look forward to joining you again next Friday at 1 o'clock. And if you've got any comments or, or feedback, then please do that through the Precept Ministries Facebook page. Anyway, have a great weekend and God bless and um, 
Are we not having any questions? Are we done? Are we done? Yeah. Are there, are are there any, any questions? I'll just leave. Yes, we'll just ask uh, if there are any questions. Yeah. If yeah. there are any questions out there, we'll just, we'll just wait for a second and just see if anybody's got any specific questions that, that you may have. Sorry, I could just to interrupt you there. Martin, have you got any questions? Yeah, so um, in this it talks about unclean spirit. Is there a difference between unclean spirits and demons? That is a great question. Now, what we'd have to do is go through the text and we'd have to mark references to demons and we'd also have to mark references to unclean spirits. And we'd have to have a, make a list about what we learned and just see what is the difference between the two or are indeed, are they the same thing? Yeah. The other thing um, was that someone said, there's an, um, when, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, when Jesus uh, asks the disciples to come with him, their response is immediate. And the same with the demon, their response is immediate to his command. Mm -hmm. How do you think that we should mimic that in our lives? That is a challenging question, isn't it? Well, <laughs> somebody said, don't ever let God ask you to do the same thing twice. Um, and I think th the response should be, we should, we too should do what Jesus says when Jesus says it. Um, sometimes, I know that can be a challenge. It can. A bit of challenge, it can. It? And I think, I think we, we recognise uh, the things that we are called to do often by the Holy Spirit. We can we get a nudge or, or we read something in the scriptures and we know God is is asking us to do something. We have a choice. It, it comes down to a choice. Am I going to do what he's called me yeah. to do or am I not going to do what he's called me to do? And, and uh, we all struggle with that to, to some extent, don't we? Uh, but God is faithful, you know. Mm. And uh, if he puts something on your heart very clearly and it lines up with the Bible, with the scripture, then I would exhort all of us to, to seek to be obedient and to follow what he's calling us to do. That, that's very interesting, actually, Martin, that whoever gave us that question. Thank you for that. Um, because I I'm sort of made a little comment here that Jesus called, but the fishermen had a choice to make. But they chose to follow him immediately. There was a cost in that they left their nets, they left their, their catch of fish, they left their family. But then there was a great kind of commissioning from Jesus. He actually gave them a new job to do, didn't he? That they would become fishers of men. And I think sometimes if we're, well, if we're not obedient to Jesus, then we're missing out on the good that he has for us. Yeah. It's so. a great question. It's a big question. And uh, clearly we can't cover all the aspects of, mm. of that right now at this particular point. Um, but thank you for that. It's challenging me because... I certainly have a tussle in my head at times about am I going to do it, am I not going to do it, when I hear from Jesus and what he's to do. So thank you, that's a real challenge that we need to do things. When Jesus says it, we need to do it immediately. Yeah. Okay. So thank you once again and uh, really look forward to joining you next Friday at 1 o'clock for the Preset Ministries Facebook Live Bible Study. God bless, thank have you. a great weekend. God bless, bye-bye.